This is Nick with LogosByNick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can create these simple line art designs using Inkscape. And these sort of designs would work really well for a t-shirt or for a logo or maybe some kind of monogram, anything you'd like to use really. In this tutorial I'll be showing you how to create this landscape with mountains and sunshine and pine trees, but you can use this method to create anything you'd like. And if you'd like to learn more about how Inkscape works, be sure to check out the Inkscape Master Class, which is a collection of over 60 videos where I go over all of the major tools and features in Inkscape, and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. I'll put a link in the description of the video if you want to check that out. So we'll go ahead and get started here in Inkscape. The first thing we want to do is just set up our document so that we're all working with a similar view. I'm going to come up here to where it says View, make sure we have Custom selected, and then I'll go to Zoom, and I'll zoom in at one-to-one. -one. And then up here, for this button right here where it says when scaling objects, scale the stroke width by the same proportion. We're going to want to make sure that's turned off for this video. As you can see, it's turned off now. If you have it enabled like that, just make sure you have that uh, turned off for the duration of this tutorial. So what we're going to do is we're going to create this design using strokes rather than paths. So to, to show you what I mean, I'm going to grab the circles and ellipses tool. And I'm going to hold control and shift and click and drag on the canvas to make a nice perfectly round circle like that. And I'm going to get rid of that black fill and instead give it a black outline. So I'll click on this red X right here to get rid of the fill color. And then I'll hold shift and I'll click on the color black right here to give that a black outline. And then I'll go to path, object to path. So we convert that to a path. And now I want to go to the edit paths by nodes tool. And I want to click and drag over all of those four nodes right there. And I want to add new nodes in there. I'm going to click this button up here in the top left that says insert new nodes into selected segments. And now we can go back to the select tool. So what I want to do now is just open up the menus that I like to work with over here. I'm going to click this button up here that says uh, align and distribute. I'm going to open that up from where it says relative to. I want to make sure I have that uh, set to last selected. And then I want to open up the edit objects, colors, gradients, strokes, and arrows arrowheads menu with that button right there. And if I click on this circle and I click on the stroke style tab up here, you'll notice you can change the width of this stroke. The width of the stroke. I have mine set to pixels. Just make sure you have it set to pixels. And for this tutorial, I'm going to use five. So go ahead and write five in there. Mine's already set to five because that's what I was previously working with. That's going to be the width of all the lines we're creating is five pixels like that. And what I want to do now is I want to create each of the, uh, this circle right here is going to represent the entire design where it's going to uh, be inside of. So what I want to do is create each of those elements separately. I want to create the mountain and then the sun and then the water in the foreground and the pine trees separately and then place it in the circle here. So let me take this circle first and bring the opacity of that down roughly in half because we're going to need to be able to see through things uh, as we're creating them here. Now I want to create the mountain, so let me grab the uh, squares and rectangles tool, which is over here. And I'm going to hold Control and Shift and create a symmetrical square like that. And again, convert that to a path by going to Path, Object to Path. I'm going to grab the Select tool now. Click on this again so we get the rotation handles and then hold Control and rotate this around until it's, the corners are going vertically and horizontal like that. And this top part of that rectangle is going to be the mountain. I want to add some snow in there now. So I'm going to make a duplicate of this mountain right here. I'm going to hit Control D on the keyboard to create a duplicate copy of that. And I'm going to hold Control and move this off to the right. And I'm going to do that again. I'm going to hit Control D and hold Control and move this off to the right like that. And if you want to move your page around like what I'm doing here, you could just press down the mouse wheel and move the mouse. Now I want to click and drag over those two squares and unify them together by going to Path, Union. And I want to place them right at the top of the mountains here, but I want to scale them down a little bit. I'm going to hold control, scale that down. Make sure you hold control while you're clicking and dragging, otherwise you're not going to scale proportionally. You're going to get distortions like that, which is not what we want. So I'm going to make this a little smaller. I'll put that right about there. That's what I'm looking for. And what I want to do now is this makes up what the snow is going to be. I'm going to take this original square. I'm going to duplicate that by pressing control D and then hold shift and click on this new object up here and go to path, cut path. And that's going to cut that into two separate pieces. If you click off of the uh, graphic to deselect everything, you could take this little piece right here and now you could press delete on the keyboard to get rid of it. So what I want to do now is do the same thing, but I want to slice off the bottom portion of this mountain here. So I'm going to grab the Bezier pen, which is over here. Or you could press B on the keyboard, which is what I like to do. And I'm going to click to create a point just outside of this square up here. And then hold control and bring this line straight through like that. 
and go ahead and click to create another point. Now we can let go of control and finish this shape up around the outside of the square. Now we can go to the select tool, hold shift, click on the square and go to path, cut path. And this is a feature we're going to be using a lot throughout this tutorial, this cut path fee, uh, function. So I would recommend getting familiar with the keyboard shortcut for it because it's going to save you a lot of time. The keyboard shortcut is control, alt, and forward slash. And that's the cut path shortcut. So I'm going to take that now, press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. And we now have our mountain. I'm going to click and drag over this. I'm going to go to path, combine. That's another one we'll be using a lot. Control K is the keyboard shortcut for that. So I'll just click it from the menu for now. Combine. And I'll just put this in the center right here. And now I want to create the sun. So I'm going to create the sun to go behind the mountains here. Let me click and drag over both of these first and center them up on the uh, vertical axis. Click off of it to deselect everything and take this circle right here. Control D to duplicate. Hold Control, click and drag it to the right. Then hold Control and Shift and scale it down a little bit. Just to get an idea, I'm going to put the sun behind the mountain right about there. So right about there looks pretty good. That's the size I want it to be. And what I'll do now is I'm going to create some sun rays going around the outside of the sun here. So I'm going to grab the Bezier pen again, which is out here. I'm going to zoom in on the top portion of the circle. I'm going to hold control and roll up the mouse wheel a few times. Click to create a point. Hold control. Bring this line straight down. Click again. And now press enter to create that line. Now we want this line to match this circle and the mountain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the stroke width of that to five pixels. I want to give this a rounded cap and I want to bring the uh, opacity of that down roughly in half like that. Now let me grab the select tool. Let me zoom out a little bit by again holding control and rolling down the mouse wheel. I want to take this and duplicate that by pressing control D and hold control click and drag this down here like that. And now I want to hold shift and click on the other one so we have them both selected and go to Path, Combine, again, which is Control K. So we're going to hit Control K to combine those. We're going to be using this feature a lot, so I recommend the, uh, the keyboard shortcut here. And then I want to click and drag over both of these objects here and just center them up on the horizontal and vertical axis like that and click off of it to deselect everything. Now I want to take just this line right, just these lines right here, click on it a second time so we get the rotation handles and then hold Control. And then if you notice, as you're holding Control, you can click and drag it around like that. And what I want to do is bring it back to the original point and press on the space bar while holding control and click. And if you notice, if every time you press the space bar, it stamps a copy of it there. So I'm going to hold control and bring it two steps counter uh, clockwise. One, two, press the space bar. One, two, space bar. And we'll do this over again until we're back to the starting point. Skipping each step, we go two steps and then press space bar. So now we have these sun rays here. Now I want to click and drag over all of these and combine them together by pressing Control K. And now I want to create some other sun rays in here. So let me click on this again to get the rotation handles. I'm going to hold Control and just rotate this around like that so we have this blank space here in the middle between these two sun rays. And I want to go back to the Bezier pen and let me zoom in on this. Again, holding Control and rolling up the mouse wheel. I'm going to create another sun ray coming out at a different length, maybe a little longer at the top and shorter at the bottom like that. Holding control, press, hold control, click and drag, and then press enter on the keyboard to create the line. I want to change the width of this to five. Let me give this a rounded cap. Uh, bring the opacity down. And I want to cut a piece out from the middle of this line here. So I'm going to create another line going through here. Hold control, bring the line straight through. Bring this one down here like that. Hold control, bring it straight through, and then back to the starting point. Grab the select tool, hold shift, click on this line, and go to path, cut path. And I think after that one, we'll start using the keyboard shortcuts. So let me take this middle piece right here and get rid of that. Maybe bring this up a little bit. Maybe I'll bring this down. I'll bring this down as well. That looks good as it is. I'll click and drag over both of those and combine them together by pressing Control K. Now let me zoom out a little bit. I'm going to duplicate them by pressing Control D. Move these down here like that. And then hold Shift, click on the original one and go to Combine, which is Control K. And now I want to hold Shift and click on the sun here. And again, make sure it's centered up on the horizontal and vertical axis. 
Now we can click off of it to deselect everything. I'm gonna click on just this segment right here. Click on it again so we get the rotation handles. And once again, we'll hold control and click and drag this around and stamp it into the areas where there's a gap between the other sun rays. So I'll stamp one of them here, one right there. And again, to stamp them, we're pressing the space bar. And there we go. Now let me zoom out to 100% by pressing one on the keyboard. I'm gonna click and drag over all of these and go to path combine or other, otherwise what we do is control K to combine them all. And I wanna place them over here within the circle here. And let me hold shift, click on the circle and just make sure it's centered up on the uh, vertical axis like that so that the sun is centered. I wanna click on just the sun. I wanna scale this down a little bit, make it fit within the emblem there. Maybe I'll bring down the mountains a little bit. Right about there is pretty good. And what I want to do is take the mountain right here. I want to duplicate that, control D, hold shift, click on the sun right there and go to path, cut path, or again, control alt forward slash to cut the path. And that's going to slice off the part of the sun that we want to eliminate. So let's click off of that to, de to deselect everything. And I'm going to take these individual bits right here and just select them and press delete on the keyboard to get rid of them. And that right there is what we're looking for. So let me let me click and drag over that this portion right here, the mountains and the sun. I'm just going to scale that down a little bit. Again, holding control while we do this so that it locks the proportions. Right about there is pretty good. Now what I want to do is I want to create some lines to represent the foreground here, or otherwise what this would be is uh, kind of like a lake or moving water. So let me grab the Bezier pen again over here. Click outside of the circle right about there. Hold control and create a line going straight through the circle out to the other end. Click again and then press enter on the keyboard. And again, we want to make this stroke width five pixels to match everything else. Give it a rounded cap and bring the opacity down in half. Now let's go back to the select tool. Let me zoom in a little bit. Let me uh, duplicate that by pressing control D hold shift, click on the circle, and then align to the bottom. This one right here where it says align bottom edges, put that right there like that. So we have this line right here and this line at the bottom, and now we can click off of it to deselect everything. So what I wanna do now is click on this top line and create some more copies. So I'm gonna press control D, and then I'm gonna hold control, I'm gonna click and drag and then hold control to bring it straight down, and I'm gonna press the space bar to add some copies in there like that. And then finally, I'll leave that one right there. And now what I want to do is I want to space these all out evenly. So I'm going to hold Shift and Alt on the keyboard, and I'm going to click and drag a red line going just through those lines right there. And it's going to select everything I draw that red line through. And with those all selected, over here where it says Distribute, I want to click on this button over here that says Make Vertical Gaps Between Objects Equal. Click on that. And now we'll combine them all together by going to Control-K. And what I want to do now is I want to take this circle, I want to duplicate that by pressing control D and I want to hold control and just bring this off to the left here. We're going to use this later at the end when we, when we wrap some text around the outside of this circle. So let me go back over here. I'm going to create another duplicate of this by pressing control D. Then I'll hold shift and click on the lines right here and go to path, cut path, or again, control, alt, forward slash like that. And it's going to slice off the lines that it's going to slice off the parts of the lines that stick out from the circle. And what you could do is you could just click and delete them all. Or if you want a shortcut, you could press shift and alt and just draw a line through them and then press delete like that. And then finally, I want to cut off the bottom portion of this circle right here where the lines are. So let me take this line. Let me duplicate that by pressing control D. Hold shift, click on the circle and go to path, cut path. And now we could take this bottom portion of the circle and just get rid of that. And now what I want to do is I want to take this mountain and just click and drag this down a little bit so it's matching up within the uh, that line right there so it's not sticking out too much. Same thing with the sun. I want to make sure that that's not sticking out at all or sticking, yeah, sticking out like that. That right there is what I'm looking for. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I want to make this water look like it's moving, like little waves or ripples of water. So I'm going to slice out little segments of these lines here to make it look kind of ra random and sporadic. So let me zoom in on this a little bit. And let me grab the squares and rectangles tool. And I'm going to create a rectangle over this portion of the line right here. And let me just, just so we can see it better, I'm going to make this red. 
and I'm going to get rid of the outline by holding shift and clicking the X like that. Now let me grab the select tool. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use this red object as a reference point to where I'm going to slice this line. So where this red object is, is going to be subtracted from this line right here. So I'm going to create some more red objects. I'm going to hit control D to duplicate that. Move this over here. I'll make this one a little smaller. Control D, I'll make another copy over here. And then maybe I'll make another one of these and put this over here. And I'll do the same thing down here. I'll create some more lines. Maybe I'll take one of these and put them right here. And again, to duplicate them, I'm just pressing control D on the keyboard. Put this one here. And then finally, this one down here. Oh, I forgot that line. And that should be good right there. So what I'll do next is I'm going to take this red, I'm going to take all of the red objects that are on one line. I'm going to hold shift and select them all. And I'm going to unify them together by going to path, union, and they're all going to be unified as one object now. And I'm going to hold shift and click on this line and go to path, cut path. And now I'm just going to take those individual segments and remove them from the line there. And we get that random broken up line like that. And I want to do the same thing and repeat this process going through here. So let me click on that. Hold shift, click on that. Path union. Hold shift, click on the line. And again, cut path, keyboard shortcut, control, alt, forward slash. Click off of it to deselect everything. Take this line and delete it. Take that line and delete it. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. The keyboard shortcut for path union is control, shift, and plus. So I'm going to do that. Control, shift, plus. Hold shift, click the line. That's how I always work. I always work with keyboard shortcuts. Uh, I, I show you how to do this in the menu because it's easier to understand when you're a beginner. But as you get better at this stuff and you start to familiarize yourself with the software, you're going to want to learn these keyboard shortcuts because it helps you work faster. So uh, now that I have that set, cut path, control, alt, forward slash, click off it to deselect, get rid of that, get rid of that. And again, these two, shift click them both, control, shift, plus, shift click this line right here, cut path. And then finally, this one right here, we could just cut the path like that. And there we go. So that right there is what we're looking for. That kind of looks like it gives you the idea that it's like a lake or some kind of moving, rippling water. And uh, the final element I want to create for this design is a couple of pine trees to put on each side here, which I think adds a nice little bit of depth to the design. So to do that, uh, I'm going to take a little shortcut. I'm going to take this mountain right here, and I'm going to duplicate that. Control D. I'm going to move that over here. And let me go to Path break apart. And I want to take this segment out and just get rid of that. And I want to take this right here. This is going to represent the, the pines of the pine tree. I'm going to hold control and just scale that down like that. Maybe a little smaller. And I want to duplicate that by pressing control D. Hold control, click and drag that down. Press spacebar to stamp a copy. And then another copy right there like that. And then I want to duplicate those. Click and drag over those. Control D, make a copy of these. And then again, I want to control D, make another copy of that one. And then control D, make another copy of this one. So we have two different pine trees here, a smaller one and then a bigger one. Now I want to make sure these are all spaced out evenly. So I'm going to click and drag over all of those and come over here to the distribute panel where it says uh, make vertical gaps between objects equal. Click on that. And then over here, do the same thing. Make vertical gaps between objects equal. And there we go. And now I just want to take one of these lines right here and duplicate them. Control D. And I just want to rotate this around right here where it says rotate selection 90 degrees clockwise. Click on that. And now at this point, I want to turn on the snaps. So up here where it says in the top left corner where it says enable snapping, go ahead and turn that on. And where it says snap cusp nodes, we want that enabled. And where it says snap smooth nodes, we want that enabled. And that's it right there. We want this one, this one, and this one enabled. And I'm going to take, I'm going to click and drag this line right here at the top point and then just snap it onto the top point of the pine tree right here like that. And now what I want to do is make this bottom portion smaller. So I'm going to grab the edit paths by nodes tool. And I'm just going to take this node and hold control and just move it up like that. And now what I could do is grab the select tool, duplicate that line by pressing control D, hold shift, click on this segment over here and center it up on the vertical axis. Click off of it to deselect everything. And then we'll go back to the uh, Edit Paths by Nodes tool. Click on that line. And then just snap this to the top up here. 
like that. Now we can go back to the select tool. Uh, what I want to do now is I just want to click and drag over this pine tree right here, all of these objects. I want to combine them together by going to Control K. And I'll combine these together as well. Control K. And let me just click over both of these and just scale them down a little bit. Again, holding Control while we scale. That right there is what I'm looking for. So I'm going to take this pine tree. I'm going to snap it onto this line right here. And then I'm going to take this pine tree. I'm going to snap it onto this line over here like that. Maybe I'll make this a little bigger like that. And I'll take this one. I'll make this one a little bigger as well. I'll snap that right here. And now I want to get rid of the portion of these lines that are in the way of the tree. So let me grab the Bezier pen again. Let me create a line going through this portion of the circle just outside of the palm tree. If you know it, not the pine, the pine tree. If you notice there's some space between the pine tree and the line, that's what I'm paying attention to. I want to create an equal amount of space between the pine tree and the line over here. And then just bring it back around to the starting point. Grab the select tool, hold shift, click on the circle and go to path, cut path. And now what we can do is just take, take that section, get rid of it. Take that section, get rid of it. Now let me press one on the keyboard to zoom out to 100%. As you can see, we're getting pretty close to completion here. The final step would be to put some text around the outside of the circle here, which is what I'm going to do next. That's what this circle is for. If you don't want to put text around your design, then you're pretty much done. You can stop right now if you want. But I want to put some text on here. And if you'd like to do the same, that's what I'm going to show you now. I'm going to take this circle and I'm going to snap it to the top of the other circle right there. And then I want to make this circle an off color of white off-white, maybe like a light gray like that. Let me get rid of the outline by holding shift and clicking the X. You know what? I want a different color altogether than gray. I want, let's do something like red where we can see it. Let's turn off the snapping now. We don't need that anymore. It's just going to get in our way at this point. And I'm going to hold control and shift and just scale this circle down just a little bit like that. So it's a little bit smaller than the circle here. And then just lower that to the bottom beneath the entire design where it says right here, lower selection to the bottom. Click on that. And now I want to create some text and I'm going to use this circle as a reference point for what I wrap the text around. So let me grab the text tool. I'm going to click on the canvas and I'm going to just write in all caps uh, line art designs. And now for the font, I'm going to click on the text editor up here. I'm going to choose a font. You could choose whatever font you'd like. I just like to use Montserrat for this design. I'll go with extra bold like that. And now I just want to zoom in and I want to place this text. You can hold control and shift to scale your text to the needed size. Let me scale this circle up a little bit. I'm going to take the text and then I'm going to hold shift and click on the circle and go to text, put on path. And that's going to put the text on the circle. So what I want to do now is click off of the graphic altogether and I want to click on just the red circle right here and click on it again to get the rotation handles. And I'm going to rotate the circle around in order to rotate the text. And that's important because you can't, if you want to rotate the text, you can't rotate the actual text object. You have to rotate the circle. And that's a, that's a mistake I notice a lot, of, a lot of people make when they're first learning how to wrap text around a circle. So I want to wrap this, I want to bring this circle around right around here. I want the line, I want the text to be going through the center of the line. So I'm going to click on this, I'm going to click on the circle again to get the scaling handles. And I'm going to scale the circle up a little bit by holding control and shift and clicking and dragging like that. And that right there is what I'm looking for. I want the line going straight through the text. Let me just rotate this around a little more so it looks even. And once you're finished, you can finalize the text by clicking on the text and going to path, object to path. And now that's no longer text. It's no longer linked with this circle here. So you can go ahead and take that circle and just press delete on the keyboard. And when I say text, it's no longer an editable text object is what I mean. You can't edit this any longer. It's now individual paths, as you can see here. So the final step here, I'm just going to slice off a segment of this line right here where the text is. I'm going to grab the Bezier pen, create a segment going through there like that. Back to the starting point, grab the select tool, hold shift, click on the line and go to path, cut path. And then we could take this line and get rid of it. Press one on the keyboard to zoom out to 100%. Now what we could do is we can click and drag over everything, bring the opacity all the way up. And if you want, what you could do is you could hold control and scale this down to make the lines a little thicker, or you can scale it up to make the lines a little thinner like that. Whatever you want to do, 
Uh, I'm going to leave mine maybe a little thinner than that. Once you get it at a thickness you like, what I would recommend doing is creating a duplicate of it so you always have this source copy to go back to. I'm going to press Control D and then click and drag this over here. And now what, I'm, what I want to do is if you want to color this in, just go to Path, Stroke to Path, and that's going to convert all of those paths into individual strokes. And what you can do is just go ahead and color that in however you'd like. And with that, we are finished. We have created our simple line art design using Inkscape. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.